Hello, welcome to the first devlog for Nebulous, which is the working title. I was on the fence on whether or not to make this because I'm going to be deploying in just over two months and so won't really be able to update for a while after I leave. But since I just restarted this project from scratch five weeks ago, I figured this was my only chance to start documenting it from the beginning. What do I mean by just restarted? Uh, well, this is a project I've been working on for about two and a half years now. Back in fall 2017, I started prototyping and concepting a strategy game that was a cross between homeworld and space engineers. The idea was that you'd build your ships from the ground up in this voxel system, you'd place the components and everything, including the piping, the crew would run around inside and do things. Uh, when your ships took hits, those systems would get damaged, pipes broken, etc. I wanted a complex ship design system so that the player could have complete control of their play style. If you wanted a fleet of glass cannons, you could have that. If you wanted a ship with triple redundant data networks so that if you took a hit to one, you'd still have control and you could have that too. I started working on it in earnest with a small team around January 2018, and we got pretty far. By the end of the summer, we had the ship construction done and even some basic tests of a multiplayer game. So two players could connect in, the ships they built would be loaded, and they could give them orders and move around and shoot, just not do any damage yet. The issue was that the ships were complicated. The code to make the ships work totaled up to pr about 25,000 lines, so obviously lots of room for bugs, and there were a lot of bad decisions that I'd made early on that carried with it, like the division between the interior and exterior of the ship, and that made things even more complex. Maintainability was getting to be a nightmare, and adding new features was even worse. At the time, I was neck deep in working on qualifications and work stuff, so I put the project on hold, which was the right decision, but still sad. Fast forward to fall 2019, I finished my qualifications back in August and got married in October, so the two biggest stressors in my life were off my back. So I picked up the project again, in secret. I didn't even tell the team that I had been working with in the past that I was tooling with it again. I started over, but I lifted a lot of code from the old version, I tried to take the lessons that I learned previously and make smarter decisions. I simplified a lot of things, unified the interior and exterior, got rid of the awful piping system, and some other things. Right after the new year, first week of January, I was sitting at my computer and I had just finished adding in a new feature and it was time to test it. Except my reaction to this wasn't, oh boy, time to build another ship to test this. It was, ugh, now I have to build another ship to test this. And that's when I kind of realized that this isn't fun. I was the one who had designed the system, so I knew how everything worked and fit together, so I rarely had to backtrack, and designing the ship still took hours, and it was so tedious. But what really got to me was that I had been working on this project for more than a year of cumulative time, and I had barely developed any actual gameplay. And I clung to this for a while because personally, I love customization, especially visual customization, so I wanted the ability to make the ships look like whatever I wanted because I thought that's what the players would want too, but I was sacrificing the rest of the game for the sake of that. So I stopped. I put the project down and spent a couple weeks thinking. There had to be a way to get the kind of complexity and depth of customization that I wanted without forcing the player to have to place every individual block of the hull. I spent a couple weeks just thinking and writing, roughing out an idea for what I thought the game should look like, and on February 3rd, I threw out everything I had and basically started over. There's some basic UI and utility code I kept because it was reusable, but almost everything is fresh. Five weeks later, what you're seeing is the current state of the game. So that was a lot of background, but I thought that for the first video at least, it was important to have that context so that you could see where the project had been and where it is now in contrast. So what I'm gonna do now is basically show you what I've done over the last five weeks and talk about the different design decisions that I've made and how they differ from how the game was originally envisioned. So this is the first thing that I worked on. This is the fleet editor. There's no more ship editor. In the original version, there was a ship editor because you would design the hulls from scratch and then you would take those hulls, save them, and then in the fleet editor, you would make instances of those into ships. But now since all of the ships are pre-modeled hulls uh, that are configured in the Unity editor, there is no reason for there to be a separate ship editor. So the uh, the fleet editor is this interface. At the top, you've got the ships that are in your fleet. On the right, there's uh, some stats that are relevant to it. The fleet stats are not calculated yet. And then on the left, you have a list of sockets. And sockets 
are basically all of the configurable pieces of the ship so that you can customize. You have a basic hull, and then you use these sockets to customize what the ship is capable of. And you'll notice that when I hover over them, it shows you where in the hull it's located. And that's important because when the ship is taking hits, when there's a penetrating hit that goes through the armor, it's going to depend on, or it's going to do damage to things that are in its path. So the physical location of certain components is important. Um, so uh, let's say I want to configure this ship as a missile frigate. So I want to put a bunch of the vertical launchers on it. Um, so now all of these mount sockets, uh, oh, there are three types of sockets, by the way. Uh, there are mounts, which are which sit on the surface. Those are for things like weapons, escape pods, etc. Compartments are things where the crew functions and provides functionality to the ship. And then there are modules, which are certain systems, uh, other systems that don't really fall into the other two. So right now we've got four uh, vertical launch systems on this ship. Maybe I want something with a little more flexibility, so I want to put some turrets on here also. So now I've got 32 missiles in total and then these two cannons. Um, and we'll also add in a berthing, which raises the number of the crew a little bit. We can add a damage control locker, which creates DC teams or damage control teams, which will be used later. And you can see that consumes crew. Um, and then we need to have a search radar, so we'll throw that in a module slot. So um, that's a configuration of a ship, for example. We can also change the ship's identity. You can type in the name directly, or you can uh, generate the name. Uh, sometimes it produces some pretty funny results, um, but sometimes they uh, they work out pretty nice and they sound pretty nice. You can also change the hull number. Um, so uh, let's just do that. And you can see that when you change it, it actually updates on the hull and up here so that you actually have the uh, customization or the name of the ship, the identity of the ship visible on it. Uh, we can also add ships. It lets us pick our uh, class, so we'll add another frigate. It generates uh, the ANS buff uh, and gives it a random number, and then we can go through the same configuration process, and then we can save this fleet and use it in the game later. This is the other half of what I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. This is the uh, skirmish game or the tactical game where you would play what you would recognize as a normal strategy game um, with your fleets. So I have two fleets spawned in here. This one here is my fleet, my player owned one. Uh, so we have the Loom of Karina that is a uh, gun frigate and then we have the Blue Brook which is a combination gun and missile frigate. So it has 32 missiles, 16 on top, 16 on bottom, and then these two guns. So when you select a ship you can hit F to focus your camera on it or you can um, free pan your camera around. So the first thing, the simplest thing that you can do is you can issue move orders. And so this right click uh, radial menu is a huge improvement over the old system that I had. And maybe I will flash a picture of the old UI up in post so you can get an idea. Um, but basically you used to have to click on this bar on the bottom and it would take your focus off of what was actually going on. Um, but now with the right click menu, you can just uh, issue orders directly. Uh, so we wanna move to a position and so we get this movement widget, uh, which is heavily homeworld inspired. If anyone has played it, you'll recognize it. So we can um, set a, a position in the plane of the ship, or we can hold control to raise or lower where we want to go. Um, and we can also use this to add waypoints. So if we hold shift, we will add a waypoint for the ship to go to first, and then we can continue adding more positions and then when we don't hold shift anymore and we release and click, the ship will start to carry out those, those orders and you can see the path that it's gonna follow rendered out here. Uh, now the next thing that we can do um, that I've been working on is the ability to uh, target the weapons. And so a large portion of the effort that I had to put into this was figuring out a system that would be flexible enough for the different types of weapons, but still give me a unified code backend for it. And uh, so I spent a number of days working on, on you know, prototyping, uh, coming up with something, throwing it out, coming up with something, throwing it out. Uh, and what I ended up with was a, uh, a pretty good system. Most of it, most of the work is not actually visible in the game. It's all backend stuff. But so we have three types of weapons here. We have electronic warfare, turrets, and missiles. 
Uh, so turrets, we have our guns grouped here, and there's nothing in the editor to do weapon grouping yet. I do this directly in the XML, but that's going to be a next step. Um, oh, and as the ship is navigating, you'll notice that the waypoint disappears before it gets there. It actually starts its turn to the next portion of the course when it reaches the point at which it would start decelerating for that waypoint. So anyway, uh, at the top here, we have three ways to target a weapon. We can uh, target by position, a sensor track, or a. Um, if we don't have any sensors, we can do certain weapons have a uh, an optical sight on them. So we have uh, we can select our ventral guns on the bottom because we're above the target, and we're going to target by position, and we get the same kind of widget, and we can uh, select a position, and the turrets will turn towards it, and start firing. Um, now, you'll notice that when the ship is selected, we have uh, these tracks that are visible here. These are uh, every ship has a sensor context, so when I don't select a ship the sensors go away. But when I select it, I see the same radar tracks that this ship can see. And you'll notice that this one is jumping all over the place. And the reason for that is that the radars have a um, an accuracy that falls off with distance. So the further away the target is, or the further away the contact is, the more granularity, the greater the granularity in uh, in where the position of the track is every time it, it cycles. And so these turrets, right now it's targeted by position because I haven't done targeting by radar track yet, but eventually these ships, their radars will be feeding the guns the targeting information that they have. And so at a greater range with less accurate sensors, your guns will be equally less accurate because they're getting inaccurate targeting data. And uh, right now there's no way for me to actually issue a stop order to these guns, so they're just gonna keep firing forever. Um, and finally, the missile system that I've developed. Uh, they don't actually fly to their target yet, but so we have uh, five missiles available just because that's the loadout that I've set. So when I go to fire missiles, I can set waypoints for these missiles, but then um, when I get to my last waypoint, before I click to actually uh, fire the missile, the way that these missiles will work, the way they work in real world, is that you fire a missile to a GPS coordinate and then it turns on its seeker when it gets there. So if I want to create a fan of missiles that are going out here so that when they reach their last coordinate, they'll turn on their seeker and they'll all lock onto this ship and attack it, um, but I don't know exactly where it's going to move, I can hold Alt and I can place multiple hits here or multiple points here and when I click the last one, when I release Alt and I click the last one, uh, the missiles will pop out. It will fire four missiles. They don't, as I said, they don't turn to the target yet, but it fires four missiles. And ideally, they would follow that track. They would each one would be assigned to each endpoint, and then they would all fan out and do their their seeking. Uh, so that looks like it's an error right there. Oops, that's embarrassing. Uh, but this is all still very very early, as I said. Um, so that's what I've got from the last five weeks. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.